Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that you too will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let it cover of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory fall. This is a cry from a generation that is desperate for revival. Let it cover all the Let it cover the north. Let it cover the south. Sing, let the weight of your glory fall. Lord, we want to see revival break out in cities and nations. Cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. Sing it as a desperate one. this song years ago as a desperate communication of the spirit. It was a desire to see the fire of God 
it was his desire to see authentic apostolic revival break out in cities. It's a very, very prophetic song. These are deep songs. These are the kinds of songs the Bible calls the songs of Moses. Songs that stem out of a bowel of hunger. They are not songs to make money. They are not just songs that you communicate to while away time. It's a song that you sing when you truly have passion for the things of God. Can we sing this song one more time with revelation? Let the weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory fall. In Mount Zion, the side of the north. Let it go. Beginning from us, O oh God. Just a very simple song. Christ say, Yahweh. for spirit power. Yahweh. We lean not upon the arm of flesh, we pray. Yahweh. That the veil that has shrouded us from entering deeper connections in the spirit. Yahweh, tear the veil. Yahweh. Let the veil be rent into two and let us see deeper. Yahweh. Holy is the one who reigns. Holy is the one who reigns. Worthy is the one who sits up fire. Mabala Basila Mambre Shalakari. Sheba Kapradila Manakata. Come on, just press and let's worship for a while. There is a spirit of worship. Adonai, you're the Lamb of God. You are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings. This is our travail tonight. Let your kingdom break.
Very simple prophetic chant. You must begin to learn the apostolic and prophetic languages that will be used to usher in a revival that the earth has not seen. They are words in the spirit, deep in meaning, profound, able to take your spirit to a plane of understanding. time yeah. go ahead and begin to sing in the spirit sing in the spirit sing in tongues we sing to you a new song, O God. you mighty God I tell you the portals of heaven are open mightily over this place the hunger of a man can draw the presence of God and when he shows up you are changed as we bask in your glory oh God let us be changed we are the uncompromising remnant that will not bow. We will travail until we see the glory of God arise upon this nation and upon the continent of Africa. We travail on behalf of Nigeria, the firstborn of God in Africa. We will not sell our birthright, but we will contend to represent authentic apostolic Christianity. Hallelujah. I'd like you to just pray one prayer and say, Lord, let your kingdom come. 
Let your kingdom come. Let your glory be revealed. Let your kingdom come. And then the eyes of the blind will be opened when his kingdom comes. Then once again we will hear the authentic sound of the shofar of the spirit. It will rise above every noise of religion and every noise of tradition and falsehood. we become envoys of your kingdom. Men who are furnished by the fires of the spirit. Men of understanding and power. Men of light. We give you praise. Tonight I pray that the bread of the spirit be broken. We contend for the hallowed bread of the spirit. Show us deep things, O oh God. Cause our eyes to be open. Reveal your glory in strange dimensions. Open us up, O oh God. Let the seals be broken. Let the scroll be open. Let our eyes see. Show us what the Father saw. We contend for the ancient part. We refuse to be deceived. Let the light of God take us to the holy hill of the one who called us. And may we become mighty men. May we become mighty men. There is an end to this pursuit. We are not chasing after shadows. We are not um, we are not just trying to do the things that we are doing because we are alive and we have to continue the traditions of religion. I need you to know that God is so grateful when he finds a people who are interested in him not just what he can do not the prosperity not marriage men who are addicted to the values of the kingdom of God who love him above and beyond what this life can do hallelujah We are the hope of this world. You must believe this. Don't ever think you are little. For in the days to come, even the, the smallest spark of light will be of benefit to men. Gross darkness will come upon this earth. It's already happening. But the Bible says upon you, it says you will arise and you will shine. Not only will you shine the light, you will become the light. Hallelujah. 
The secret of spiritual growth is progressive revelation. There is nothing else that can make a man grow. The Bible says that when God made man in the Garden of Eden, the life that they had was supposed to be sustained by the continuous eating of the trees of the garden. They were not eating it for hunger. They were eating it because it had the capacity. It was called the tree of life. It had the, the capacity to give life. And that tree is the accurate revelation of the word of God. So as we receive the word of God, there is an unveiling of the reality of this life, this Zoe life that we talk about. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm excited because many of you may not realize that every great revival started with a movement that was concealed. People did not know that this was how far God would go until the fire became so much that no devil could stop and he began to move from city to city. Hallelujah. There's an army rising up. There's an army. There's an army rising up to break every chain. 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 Can you just chain. sing that part? There's an army rising up. There's an army. Rising up. We are this mighty army. There's an There's an army that is rising up. There's an army. We're rising up. To break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The prophet began to speak. Malachi the prophet started speaking and he said, there will be a sign that will characterize the coming of Jesus. He says, shortly before the day of the Lord, Elijah will come again. Hallelujah. Did you know that the Bible never tells us anything about Elijah's birth, origin? It just tells us this, this wicked system, this she goddess called Jezebel, who was married to the king. Jezebel was a witch. She was not a wife. That's why she reappears in Revelation again. In the book of Revelation, Jezebel reemerges again. Hallelujah. The personality Jezebel was an adumbration of a system. Hallelujah. And the Bible says during her time, the prophets of God suffered so much. The prophets of Baal were reigning and they locked up and killed the prophets of God. Suddenly, a strange man without origin just emerged. The Bible says, and Elijah the Tishbite. From where he came, we don't know. We don't know who, where he was taught the things that he knew. The Bible says he was a representative of a spirit. Elijah represented the sword of God. And the Bible says when he showed up, he showed up for one assignment. To conquer that she goddess. And afterwards he left. Who is this strange man? Because we see him reimagine again. Jezebel is still in revelation. Elijah is still in revelation. Where did he come from? Did he just appear and Elijah the Tishbite? Where was he trained? Who taught him that the eye of witchcraft could not find? And Elijah the Tishbite. 
rose up as a cry. The prophets of God were suffering. Only about 400 of them were being kept in disguise by a man called Obediah. No prophet could lift up his head and prophesy the counsel of God. And the Bible says in response to their cry, one great prophet, Elijah the Tishbite. A single man who terrorized the system of Jezebel and brought her to her knees. And the Bible says, before the day of the Lord, Elijah will come back again. But he will not come back as a person. He will come back as an apostolic generation. Are you getting my point? And it's in the similitude of what was adumbrated in the Old Testament. Nobody understood. Nobody knew about the training. He was, he was a strange manifestation. The Bible says, Elijah the Tishbite. And this is the making of Elijah's. The spirit, the authentic spirit of prophecy that will arise. This is how his kingdom will come. Hallelujah. And Elijah the Tishbite suddenly showed up and he began to cause havoc to this godless system. I need you to know that you are a representative of this spirit of Elijah. This authentic apostolic and prophetic spirit. And the first assignment of Elijah is to destroy the altars. Are you getting my point? The first assignment of Elijah is not to call the names and phone numbers of people. The first assignment of Elijah is to come in with a dimension of God that has not been seen. That will bring the powers that be to their knees. This is why I raised this song. To break every chain. A reemergence of the Elijah spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight I have I've just been praying for the teachings that we are going to be bringing that not only will we get puffed up with rema and knowledge. Hallelujah. But that these teachings will sustain an ability to cause radical transformation in our lives. We have said this is a season of light. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you, there is a level of light that you carry. You become a threat to the kingdom of darkness. This is what we are training. We are training you to become a light. A light. You will be so bright, the powers of darkness cannot ignore. Our job is to expose the works of darkness and to bring people to accurate spiritual understanding. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. First Timothy 4 verse 1. Let's rush. He won't stop till we lose just like him he won't stop he won't stop till we lose just like him God is birthing something strange in these days God is revealing something new in our midst he won't stop, he won't stop until we lose just like him. He won't stop, he won't stop. First Timothy 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons stop the bible says in the latter time there are certain people who for some reason will depart from the faith 
and will begin to give heed to what? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Very interesting. It didn't say doctrines that were taught by demons. Doctrines that were manufactured from the pit of hell and brought taught accurately by demons. Verse 2. Speaking lies in hypocrisy and having their own conscience seared with hot iron. Verse 3. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from food which God has created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. The last verse, verse 4. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it's received with thanksgiving. Let's just stop there. Hallelujah. We're examining three things tonight. Tonight, we're going to be studying the scripture. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I receive light. When, when our eyes are open, we will be able to mature and comprehend the things of the spirit deeper. Let me tell you something. Listen. Do you know what scares demons and principalities and powers? It's not the statue of a man or woman. Are you getting my point? It's not your English. It's not your degree. Hallelujah. But the degree of light, the degree of light, when you see the spiritual structure of a believer, you can know his level in the spirit by the degree of light. Are you following me now? So, at the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus revealed to us how his spirit man was. Are you getting me? It was light so bright that the people could not comprehend it. And every time we come before his presence, by revelation, we keep contending to attain unto that dimension of light. And the degree to which we conform to that light is the degree to which we rise to maturity. And that's a product of revelation. The difference between revelation and information is that revelation transforms. Information just gives you awareness. If it is revelation, it must change you. It was designed to change you if you truly understand it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in the latter days, verse 1 again please, that men will give room to deceiving spirits. Who are these spirits? Where did they come from? What is their ministry? Please pay attention brothers and sisters. We are in a day and age that if you lack spiritual intelligence, you will die. Are you following me now? We need it as a matter of urgency. In every generation, there is always a contention of light and darkness. There are people who just go around as social beings. But there are certain people who understand spiritual things and are anointed to communicate the counsel of God to make sure that the banner of the kingdom is lifted throughout that generation. And we happen to be that generation. So it's important for everybody to pay attention. There's a lot of error going on in the body of Christ. Listen, please. Hallelujah. And the error that is going on in the body of Christ is so deep, it calls for immediate response. Hallelujah. If we do not respond to the tragedy that is happening in the body of Christ, and we allow this Jezebel to strangle away the prophets of God. If Elijah's do not arise, a time will come there will be no prophets who will speak the counsel of God. Are you following me now? There's a lot going on in the body of Christ, the continent of Africa, and especially our dear country, Nigeria. Nigeria is the firstborn of Africa. We are the model to the the continent of Africa in terms of spirituality. Hallelujah. And it's important 
that we preserve the things of the spirit. There are three errors in the body of Christ that we trust God to address and correct tonight. Hallelujah. It's called apostasy. You know what apostasy is? Apostasy is a departure from the accurate truth of God's word. A departure. I preached a message, I think it was last year or year before last, the apostate church, you can get it and listen. A departure from not, listen, listen, please. I, I don't mean the departure from a doctrine. I mean a departure from the known patterns of God. Everything about the building of God's kingdom is not left for the discretion of man. Are you following me now? There is a pattern. God in his nature will not allow man to build his kingdom his own way. It has always been the character of God to create a pattern for man to access him. So apostasy is when by the activity of wicked spirits, men begin to deviate from the accurate pattern of God. And the Bible says this will happen in the latter times that some will depart from the faith. What faith? Christianity? No, no. No, God never called us Christians. What is the faith? The pattern. There is a pattern that our fathers followed. They knew something that made them walk with God. They knew something that made the, the kingdom of darkness quake before them. And there is a gradual deviation. Please listen to me. The church in Nigeria is deviating fast. And there's got to be an, an intervention of Elijah. Because the few prophets of God who are left in the country are facing a lot. Jezebel is, is prospering on our pulpits, in our churches, across different places. And the prophets of God, the true prophetic and apostolic voices are being quieted until Elijah rises and that there be an open contention between light and darkness to return the body of Christ back to pattern otherwise we are going to lose it and we'll miss it not just as a continent not just as a nation but as a people hallelujah say amen thank you Jesus Matthew 13 verse 25 Matthew 13, Jesus began to explain to us the tragedy that will befall the church. Matthew 13. Let's start from verse 23. Or 24. Let's, let's make it 24. And another parable he put forth to them saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed. That man, listen, that man is God and his purposes and counsel. So how did he start? He started with good seed. Is that true? He sowed good seed. He created a pattern. But something happened. 25. The first four words. One, two, go. But while men... This is how the spirit of the Antichrist began to enter the church. He began to cause men to sleep. The Bible says that a time came when the eyes of Eli started getting dim. And remember the Bible says the eye is the light of the body. That means if your eye is closed, there is no more light. No more illumination. There's no more access to divine things. And the Bible says that the eye of Eli started getting very dim. And that continued until it got to a point where men slept. Hallelujah. While men slept, when they began to intercourse with Babylon, 
when they began to respond to the promptings of this antichrist system when they began to do ministry by doctrines and patterns and methods that are not consistent with the way of god the bible says they started giving heed to deceiving spirits are you following me please and they started embracing the doctrines of demons and men slept and then the enemy came and did what so tears this is what is happening to the nigerian church there is a mixing of that which is authentic with that which is counterfeit. And all of them are being mixed in our churches, in our parishes, in our assemblies. And right now there is so much confusion. It will take the accurate eye of the eagle that is brought forth by the spirit of Elijah to divide between bones and marrow and show the church that no matter how this looks, this is not of God. Hallelujah. Because the Bible tells us something, verse 26. It says, but when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tears also did what? Appear. That means when they sowed it, it was there as a tendency, but it had not yet manifested. Are you getting my point now? A lot of people started ministry, hearing the voice of God, but they did not stay in the spirit for the Holy Ghost to keep walking, walking on them and pruning out anything that does not become like Christ. Eventually, as the ministry started expanding, as the membership started expanding, they noticed a strange thing happening in the assemblies that there were also tears that were growing. Verse 27. It says, so the servants of the owner came and said, Sir, did you not sow good seed? In other words, who gave these pastors this message? Where did this rema come from? Where did this doctrine, these revelations that we have built ministries, we have held conventions and meetings with teachings that have no bearing with the patterns of the kingdom? The Bible says they ask a question. Did you not sow good seed? What happened on the way? How then does it have tears? 28. This is what made a lot of men of God think that what they are doing is right. Because in the wisdom of God and for the sake of we the elect of God, he said, no. The, see, he said, the enemy has done this. And the servant said to him, do you want us to go and gather them? That means, should we start pruning? He said, ah, in the midst of these tears, there are genuine people. They are not strong enough to stand the heat of separation. So let them grow. Verse 28, 29 now. He says, but he said, no, lest while you gather up the tears, you will also hurt the wheat. Are you getting my point now? And so God allowed many churches and many ministries to grow. In spite of their wrong doctrines, money was still coming. Are you getting my point? Membership was still coming. And because of that, a lot of people thought it was an endorsement that they were doing the right things. But right now, the spirit of Elijah is suddenly showing up because the, the, the wheat has become matured enough for the separation to begin to take place. And the Bible says, 30 now, let both grow together. So no problem. Let the church grow even with the error, no problem. I will have a way by my wisdom to manage it, but a day will come, the separation will happen. Are you getting my point now? There are so many people that have stood upon our pulpits and said a lot of things that have God has no hand in it at all. There are many conventions in this country that God has no business with what is going on. Are you getting me? They have organized God out of church programs. They have gone for ministers' conferences and imbibed doctrines of demons by men and women who have no altar at all. hallelujah and the bible says let them both grow so they came back applied these things and it seemed to be producing results but right now it has gotten to a point where it's destroying the remnant of the house of god and except the spirit of elijah arises and addresses it the casualty will be too much it says until the harvest 
and at the time of the harvest i will say unto the reapers this is a strategy first gather together what this is why we are beginning to attack these things because the season of the harvest is here. The Bible says, you guys are farmers speaking to the nation of Israel. He said, there is a way you can look at the atmosphere and you will know that the harvest is near. And bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. So, it started with good seed. The man of God started as a genuinely anointed person. The ministry started as an authentic ministry but eventually while men began to sleep the bible says a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the eyes and it says poverty is not just lack deprivation of all sorts whether spiritual material and otherwise will come upon you suddenly like an arm bandit so these men began to sleep hallelujah and it was in that sleep you see this is listen how many of you have read the story of samson and delilah samson was a type of the church delilah was a wicked spirit are you getting my point now notice that samson was called to be a judge over israel and the bible says savior shall arise everything in the bible is prophetic it's an adumbration of something an adumbration means a foreshadow are you getting me? A prophetic preplay of something that would happen. Samson was a man who was strong and he terrorized the Philistines. And then the Bible, notice every time men who symbolized the government of God appeared, it was women that threw them down. Not women, they were physical entities. But this woman, you know why woman? Because women have the capacity to give birth and reproduce their kind again. This is why the Bible calls this Babylon, this harlot in Revelation 17. It says she's a woman that sits upon a beast that has seven horns, seven heads and ten horns. Are you learning something tonight? A terrible tragedy happening in the body of Christ. And... Listen, when Delilah came to Samson, she studied his weakness. Are you getting my point? She carefully studied it. She did not come with a sword. I want to show you the mystery of men sleeping. And the Bible said she came and she donated her lap free of charge for him. Correct? The first time, you see, the nature of the glory of God is that the glory of God does not depart suddenly. When the glory of God in the vision that was shown Ezekiel, when it was leaving the temple, it left slowly. But adventure, the people would realize and repent. Hallelujah. The first time it happened, notice what is a woman looking for? Trying to know the source of a man's strength. She didn't say marry me. She didn't say sleep with me. She didn't say give me money. Are you following me now? She kept saying, Samson, tell me the mystery behind your strength. All she was concerned about was his anointing. Because it was with that anointing he would conquer the spirit of the Antichrist. Are you getting me? She wanted to kill the source of his strength. And she found out that there was a relationship between his eyes, his hair, and his strength. That was why when she captured him, the first thing that happened was his hair. The second thing that happened was his eyes. I need you to know that all these women you see in the Bible, they were not normal. They were envoys of demonic entities because they did certain things that did not make sense. For instance, why will Herodias ask her daughter for dancing well? She said, make sure you tell the king that I want the head of John the Baptist. What do you do with head? Are you getting my point now? There are many things that happen in Bible that if you don't read with the spirit of revelation, this is the error that many people have carried. They have just read it theologically and they have bought for doctrines that are not accurate. But the spirit of Elijah comes dividing the word of God accurately. Hallelujah. All through scripture, 
we'll do a quick drive if it's possible as we as we continue and let me show you that disguising true people and stories has been the same battle the battle of light and darkness are you getting my point now for instance the bible tells us that before the coming of the lord again there will be a repetition of the days of noah did you read that in your bible what happened in the days of noah because you see when satan fell when satan fell there are so many things in my head now Let, let's just continue wherever we stop do you know what satan told the angels that made them to comply don't you think satan would have told them something that was really captivating for them to leave their estate and to come down to partner with him are you getting my point now because of satan's access to the presence of god he had knowledge of mysteries and the bible tells us that this man called satan or then the son of the morning rebelled he had a he had a political ambition all this ambition didn't start from the politicians there is a spirit and he he made this manifesto clear in isaiah 8 uh, in, in 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 um uh what now isaiah 14 now i will do this i want to arise above the stars of god i want to be like the most high that was his manifesto but he deceived all of these people and when he was casted down he was casted together with a lot of other angels hallelujah and then when adam came i told you again that the garden of eden is not in the earth realm are you getting me that's why they cannot find it the garden of eden is still intact you go to the book of revelation you see the garden of eden still there with the tree of life nobody has taken anything that garden was withdrawn are you getting me it was a supernatural sphere the reason is look at the things that covered the garden a cherub and a flaming sword can a cherub and a flaming sword just cover something that is just three-dimensional hallelujah and man was driven out of that garden but there was a prophecy and this it was that prophecy that started this great battle are you getting me the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent and satan knows that every time jesus speaks he already has a strategy are you getting me please follow this when one of the errors that i want to correct i hope we'll be able to establish it is how many of you have heard of that thing called familiar spirits have you heard that statement i will show you the origin of the activity of what we call familiar spirits familiar spirits are not just out to monitor your life they are out to monitor the strategy of the spirit for every season Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Where do we start from? Okay. Are you getting my story now? And then, when Adam and Eve, when Adam knew his wife, and she gave birth to Cain, listen please, Satan thought that Cain was going to be the person that God will use. Because they, he knew that God would need a man. Are you getting me? So Satan entered Cain. Are you getting my point now see i'm talking of the activity please let's go to first timothy 4 verse 1 again the, i want to show you the ministry of these deceiving spirits can you see where it started from lucifer deceived the angels are you getting my point now and they came down when man fell deceived eve satan always changes the patterns of god because every time God, when God designed family, please listen. And, and, and ladies, you have to listen. This is a very powerful message. When God designed family, I hope you know that God made man the head of that family. Is that true? That means any correspondence through God, according to his structure, should go to the man. Notice how Satan changed it. Satan went to the woman. 
Are you getting me? And everywhere you see the manifestation of his spirit, the woman there, that figure tries to usurp it on the man. Jezebel. Are you seeing now? Herodias. And all of these kinds of people. This is what the Bible calls the devices of the enemy. Stratomai, the Greek word. His methodology. It may have changed and metamorphosed through seasons. But the pattern is the same. That means when you sustain the eye of prophecy, you can detect him at once. Are you learning something, please? So Cain is born and Satan makes a bargain with Cain. And Cain begins to manifest another spirit. And then the Bible says how that Abel shows up. And Satan, suspecting that God may use Abel, began to move Cain to kill Abel. Are you seeing why Cain? Why will Cain kill his brother? See, it's time for you to begin to study the word, not just to get sermons, but for spiritual knowledge. Ask questions. Why will Cain just kill the, his brother? What for? Are you getting my point now? When Cain killed his brother, in a passage of time, the Bible says Cain started building a city. The Bible never told us that Cain was an architect. What made him to start lusting after building a city? It was the spirit of the Antichrist. Are you seeing? Because God wanted to build a city and name it after his son. So the spirit of the Antichrist through Cain built a city and named it after Enoch, his son. And that was where atrocity started from. Are you getting my point now? And then it got to the time of Noah. God suffered long with them. When it got to the time of Noah, listen to me, listen to me. Noah was a very strange man. He was not just an old, bald headed man. Noah walked with God. Are you getting me? Noah had a manuscript that he used to build the ark. The ark was not just built carelessly of gopher wood and so on and so forth. It was a prophetic message. Are you getting my point now? Noah had secrets that he knew that made him the head of the spiritual activity of that generation. He talked with God. He communicated with God. He understood the mystery of the flood. And that was the reason why, listen, please, listen, listen. When they came out, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, there were eight people again. Satan started looking for somebody else to enter. Are you getting my point? So Satan entered Ham. Are you getting my point? And the Bible says he saw his father's nakedness. He did not just see his father's nakedness. It's a coded word. He saw into the secret of what Noah was supposed to preserve. Why will a man curse his son for just seeing his nakedness and say you will be a servant of servants? Is that cost not too much? Just for seeing a man's nakedness. What of children that take care of their parents in the hospital and have to bath them and do other things? It was beyond just seeing a physical nakedness. It was opening something spiritual that he was not prepared for. He was, it was every time men shifted from God's patterns, they suffered. This was why he caused Cain. I mean harm. And the cause that was given to Ham, if you read your Bible very well, was that he was going to serve his brothers. Is that true? Now, Satan found expression through Ham. Go to Genesis 11. Don't you, I mean, you don't need to open it. But go to Genesis 11. What happened? Suddenly, another wizard who was the son of Cush, who was from the lineage of Ham. Are you seeing now? A man called Nimrod. Nimrod. Strange man just appeared from nowhere a man who commanded such power he was a lord are you getting my point now how did nimrod gain so much influence and the bible says nimrod was a hunter we never saw one animal that nimrod hunted what was he hunting I will show you in the book of Revelation that he was hunting for souls. Because Satan suddenly realized that destroying men is not the way. So he says, let's adopt them and use them rather than killing them. Are you, are you getting my mystery tonight? The Bible says it has been given unto us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. There are things you understand that the devil will run away from you. Because he knows that light 
has brought everything that is darkness to bear. Are you getting my point now? The problem with we preachers is that we just cut a lot of stories and tell people things that when they join the puzzles together, it doesn't make sense. Listen, listen. I think I was talking to um, the, the, the music director and, and the worship team chairman. They came over to my place and I told them that I've been criticized for a lot of things. One of it is this faith thing. I believe in faith, but I've said this thing again and again years ago. That faith doesn't have to be on something you don't understand. Are you getting my point? The true concept of faith is not just built on shadows that cannot be understood. I said it last week. No pilot sits on a plane and says, passengers... I trust God that we'll arrive safely. I've never learned how to fly this plane, but you guys just sit back, sit back and, 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 and enjoy. There's Jehovah Jireh, there's Jehovah Sikenu, there's our banner and all of that. And then the people sit down and say, hallelujah, let's just be confessing. We will arrive. We will arrive. Plane corporate. We are now at 3,000 feet. Nobody does that. Are you getting my point now? So faith is not a mystery. It has been turned to look like anything in the kingdom you just understand. Just, you don't understand. Just accept by faith. Have you had teachings like that? God said it. I may not understand it. I don't care. I, want, I don't want to understand it. All I know is that Satan is the bad guy. Jesus is the bad guy. We are for Jesus. Let's win him. This is what Americans are, are shipping into Nigeria. And we are laughing and receiving it and holding massive conventions and misleading people. Whereas the Bible says, do not be unaware of the stratomai. Satan is not an idiot. He has a, a strategy. This guy stayed close to the presence of God. Are you learning something tonight? So you see it, Nimrod Kush. He said, go to let us build a city. Build a city again. The same city that Cain tried to build. And then the judgment of Noah canceled everything. Now he says, let us build a city and let us make a name for ourselves. Listen, when you study Bible history, please listen. I want to show you the origin of occultism and witchcraft. Are you following me now? Don't say it does not concern you. The word is making you mature believers. Are you getting my point now? Do you know the origin of this thing we call occultism and witchcraft? Nimrod Kush, according to Bible history, was the son of Kush who married a woman called Samiramai. Are you getting me? And because, listen please, this is very, very important. Samiramai was a witch. These were people that were possessed. They were incarnates of hell. Are you getting my point? Envoys that wanted to continue the agenda of God. Samira might killed Kush, her husband. Are you getting me? And Satan came and interpolated this thing. Satan came and made Nimrod to believe that in this new move and in this kingdom, he was going to make him Lord. He was going to be great. And the price for that is that he will aberrate the normal progression of, of human beings. And then Nimrod married his mother. Are you getting my point now? So Nimrod married. Are you seeing how Satan was twatting the, the, do I call it the genetic code of human beings? Nimrod married his mother. Can you imagine? Now the son, I don't know what, what they are going to call the son now. Huh? His mother is still his grandmother. As ugly as it is, listen, this was the mystery of what began to happen to Nimrod. Nimrod was a hunter of souls. His job was to exert so much influence that he would bring people to himself. Because in Revelation, when he began to tell us about this mystery Babylon and all the commodities she does business with, it called the souls of men. Is that true? Is that true? There's no time, you see. This time thing, I wish like, I feel like pissing this watch. Praise God. 
you just sing praise and worship and it's 10 o'clock. <laughs> praise God. Kai, this time is limited. Bear with us, honestly. These are not the kinds of things that you don't just come and share a message and it's boiling in my spirit because I want us to get it. Praise the Lord. Are you understanding my story? All through scripture, when you trace, you will see that this spirit looks for women in every generation that will represent its operation and look for men that will compromise. Are you getting me? That was where witchcraft and so on and so forth started. And then all these things called divination and necromancers. All of these things happened. When Saul was king, there's no time. But I hope you read your Bible very well. You remember that? Remember when Saul was king? Saul dealt with diviners and necromancers. Is that true? He frustrated them so much. According to scripture, there was only one woman that was left. One sorcerer. One necromancer. And the Bible says a time came when Saul slept and he deviated. Alright? It didn't use that exact word, but I'm just using it. When Saul deviated from the things of God, he went to go and consult her. Is it in your Bible? And when she met him, he, he, he concealed himself. And she said, ah, don't disturb me. Saul, is, Saul has made life bad for us. No business in this city again. And he said, no problem. I vow I will not tell Saul. And he said, whose spirit should I invoke? I'm going to show you how men of God operate what you call the prophetic. That they invoke the spirit of the dead. Correct? It's happening in many churches. Somebody dies and they invoke the spirit of that dead person. I want to show you how they use necromancing. And when they do that, they invoke that. And the Bible says she invoked in her vision. She was seeing an old man coming. And Saul, and Saul told her, I said, who do, do you see him? Tell me about his appearance. And Saul from, and Samuel now seemingly from the vision told her the man that is standing with you is Saul. And she turned, she said, ah, ah. Are you not Saul? He said, ah, sorry, it's true. I'm Saul. But call me the spirit of Samuel. You think that was Samuel? He looked like Samuel. Talked like Samuel. Where did these spirits come from? I want to show you. See, it didn't start with Africa. So don't let westernization tell you these things are unnecessary. They have been there in scripture. And if we don't gain knowledge of this truth, we will die like mere men. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord. Diviners and different people. Let me tell you something that happened. See, most of these entities that you call, how many of you have heard of demons being disembodied spirits? Have you heard that word? Disembodied spirits. What does that mean? That means that there are spirits that do not have a body to find expression. Is that true? That means they are consistently under frustration. Jesus himself taught us that when that spirit leaves a man, it becomes restless because they need material medium to communicate. There is a law in the earth realm that if you do not have a body, you cannot function here. Are you getting my point? Let me tell you how this demon started. I hope we have time. Can I talk to you? See, the Bible says, listen, demons are not, the, uh, they are not the only wicked entities in the satanic kingdom. Demons are just a class of wicked spirits. There are others. For instance, principalities. They are not demons. Are you getting me? I have come to the end of myself. Take over, Jehovah. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Listen. I hope you believe what I'm telling you. Listen, how many of you have seen certain people, maybe those who do a lot of occultic things, when they leave their body, 
they make sure they close the room so that nobody comes to push their body you know why because they must return the same way they left if you shift their body they are not dead but the spirits cannot return to the body again are you understanding what i'm saying there are many spiritual entities like that in the spirit realm please listen to me i want to tell you some things that will bless you we said this is a year of light this is solid meat light that keeps you in command dominion will happen naturally you don't claim it light brings you into it are you getting my point we are we are demystifying this deity called satan once and for all so that you will know that the church will truly be a victorious church listen satan led these demon spirits are you getting i mean angels now are you getting my point now this was what because it is within the character of angels to translate themselves is that true that means they can change state there are different kinds of angels maybe when we deal with angels we we'll talk there is a northern army there are different there are messenger angels there are cherubs there are seraphs there are different kinds of angels now satan led a campaign and told these guys together with I've, I've, i said it the last time apollyon leviathan have you heard of all these spirits they were real spirits together satan didn't just do alone it was supposed to be that he would spearhead the rebellion and if it worked it would be chop by chop so all the demons that helped him are you getting my point now <laughs> when you read the book of psalms and see the things that the psalmist began to speak you will see that the spirit of revelation was upon him hallelujah are you getting blessed can we continue all right please make sure you are listening this is not let me tell you something with revelation if you get too used to it the devil can use it and kill you are you getting my point he won't kill you just by oppressing you he will make you so puffed up revelation that should deliver you is not delivering you but anybody who wants to talk to you you will begin to break these scriptures and say let me give you a rundown of how everything started and then it's not help. this is what is happening so we must open up ourselves and please listen i'm serious and contend for change this is not to equip you to now run to your fellowship or your church and say for the next four months i have a message and th this is what people do and then start running and say ah i must do this i must do this there are angels there's apollyon have you heard of him and they say wow from whence cometh this kind we have not seen it in this fashion the goal of revelation is not entertainment brothers and sisters is to equip you with light that dispels every darkness hallelujah now listen these angels translated themselves are you getting my point in the days of noah and they started having intercourse with women physical women that means you know that the child they will give birth to will not be pure human that's the origin of giants are you seeing that that's why the children that they had six fingers, six to superhuman abilities. Can I surprise you? That breed is still in the earth today. This is what scientists saw that they called X-Men. What is X? Former. What was the revelation behind their producing these films? You were just watching and eating popcorn in cinema and nodding. Whereas... This is a mystery. They know a war is coming. All of these scientific films keep telling you a war is coming. And that battle is between mankind and another race. This was the whole subject of Lord of the Rings. And they had to consult other kingdoms and bring their kings together. And it was a human, one little boy called Frodo that carried the ring, a symbol of authority. All the other kingdoms backed him up. These things are spiritual messages. These scientists through, through zodiac and, and astrology and all kinds of divination, they can peep into spiritual things. It's not that they know the future. Are you getting me? How do I put it now? Help me. Look at me. How many of you know which country is ahead of Nigeria, time-wise? What? 
What is UK? How can you say UK? Us, let's, let's just assume, please listen, we, are, we don't have time. Let's assume Australia. How many of you know that when Australia is saying 18, we are still in 17? So that ability to peep ahead, that's what happens in the realm of the spirit. Because of the regulation of times and seasons. Are you getting my point? It, this is what is adumbrated in geography. That it is possible for one region to begin to access certain things before the other one. It happens in the spirit too. And this is the principle of divination. Help us, Lord. Take me to the place, the place you are. That secret place, take us, Lord. That's where I want to be. Take me to the place, the place you are. The secret place, that's where I want to be. That's where I want to be. Let's rush. Error number one. I touched it in the realities of heaven and hell, but I just feel like touching it again because the message didn't strike the chord the way I want. So I want to touch on the issue again. Messages from hell, divine realms. That's number one error that needs to be. Listen to me. I don't know how many women have shaved their hair, sold their cover shoes, and did a lot of things because, listen, this is a very serious message right now. Certain people, Claim they went to heaven or went to hell. Listen, I explain all these planes to you and you will see sense in what I'm saying now. And they brought the core message in the body of Christ now. is not the Bible again. It's who came with what from where. Are you getting my point? These are the deceiving spirits and the doctrines of demons. Remember the Bible says if God did not cut the time, even we the elect can be deceived. What kind of great deception can make people to see a lie and take it as true. Are you getting my point? It must be a great deception. So, what is it? The Bible says, or the people, the story. Somebody just comes back. Oh, I went to hell. And then you print CDs, you print books. Now, there are a few people who will trust their experiences. Very few. As a matter of fact, they were the initial people. People like like, um, what's her name? Mary Baxter and so on and so forth. All these many things that they do now. Those people, when they came back, they even gave the CDs free. Because of how much they wanted to be dissociated with this world. Huh? But right now, what we have is nonsense. And there are many church pastors in an attempt to show piety and response to spiritual things. This is the result of sleep. They invite all these people, these, these people, and they come back, uh, they come to pulpit and cry. Ah, I went to hell. I saw your mother. I thought your mother died. She gave me a message. It's her name, not Jane. You say, yes, my mother's name is Jane. I saw Jane. I saw Jane. She was crying in hell, and she could talk. Crying. Have you, have you seen a house catching fire? Have you seen the people inside? Listen, please. This is not criticism. Please. I'm just addressing something. This is the spirit of Elijah. Are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> A lot of people came with revelations. Those of you inside, outside, if you are hearing me, shout praise the Lord. Listen. These revelations are destroying churches right now destroying families are you getting my point people came ah you went to hell why did you go to hell your skirts didn't reach here why did you go to hell okay um this pastor you were supposed to drop five naira what where is the five naira that's where you are going somebody went to hell seemingly and brought back the list of the names of almost every man of god alive right now that they are sure candidates of hell 
This is somebody that got born again. He was not up to three weeks and he seemingly went to hell. I will show you the mystery of what is happening. I wish we have time tonight. I would have shown you something powerful. It's the strategy of the devil. The people are innocent. Are you getting my point? Don't be angry at the people. They do not even know that they themselves are under deception. Paul says, I was caught up to the third heaven. That means there are other heavens. There is the astral realm. There are a lot of other realms. There are galaxies. All of these galaxies and planets, I hope you know some of them have inhabitants. This is the mystery of aliens. This is the mystery of aliens. There is a lot of story we don't know in the earth. They just gave birth to you in the middle of history. It's what they taught you from social studies to what again? Social science. History, government. And then you read political science or whatever it is. And you believe you know the world. No, there is a lot more. There is a lot more. Hallelujah. There is a lot more. There is a lot in this earth realm that we have. There are portals in this realm. There are many people you see in the earth realm that are not pure human beings. They are moving like you. They talk. You've eaten with some of them in the restaurant. They are not pure breeds. These are agents of darkness preparing for the revival that is coming. I read an article as far back as 19... I have the documentary as a matter of fact about people who went underground. Is that true? They went underground. And they saw a place designed by aliens that can see 20,000 people. And there is an altar in the middle. When you stand in that altar and talk, they will hear you everywhere. No mic. Verified scientifically. Don't you know there is a world under the earth? Philippians chapter 2. That every knee is not just talking about hell alone. What have they not told us, brothers and sisters, that is responsible? I will show you how this applies. So that you will see how your family got into it. Your innocent father from the village was just moving around. Nothing missing, nothing broken. He entered into what he didn't understand. Look at what a lot of believers are suffering in today. And one of the error, one of the error that I wanted to talk about is the negligence of spiritual laws. Many of us have, listen, listen, and I don't say this to criticize. There is an exaggeration of what we call the grace message. I've said this thing again and again. Please don't be offended. I'm just telling you the truth in love. There is a jurisdiction to which when the grace message steps out, it will be misleading. There are people right now that they almost don't read the Old Testament. You open, they say, what are you doing with the law? I have a question. What is law? What really is law? What is the cause of the law that Christ redeemed us from? Is it Ten Commandments? Is it other mosaic laws? Or Ten Commandments plus them? Is it spiritual laws? A lot of people speak and say, ah, oh, all of this. Law is gone. There's nothing law. Nothing again, but you believe in the law of sowing and reaping. And you teach, give, and it will be given. And a lot of people say, even God cannot do anything. So, which part of the law has been abolished? We'll talk about that in another teaching. We have a lot of series. This is a year of light. We trust God to open our eyes. Not to go and start criticizing people, but to be the light. A reference. The devil is in trouble this year. There are things I will explain to you, you will never be afraid of death again. There are things I will explain to you, you will know that even this mystery thing called deliverance, you will understand. Who are these people that follow people quietly to church and come and sit down? And later you say in the name of Jesus and all of these kinds of things, we will explain it. When you understand this, I'm telling you, you will just start laughing. You won't even pray. Let me tell you, there are two ways to bind the devil. One is prayer, the other is revelation. 
when authentic light enters you, you grow out of some things at once. Deliverance is going on right now. It's just that many people, their concept of deliverance is, ah, you fall down, say, I want to go, I want to, no, no. It's not, it, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to do those things. Light is what drives away darkness. Permanently. You see, that's why if, if I deliver Dosim, for instance, I lay hands on her and she rolls, rolls, rolls and stands up. Listen, and there is no light. Do you know why certain deliverances are so easy? It's not because the man is powerful. The demons are mocking the man. He has no spiritual intelligence. They just stroll out and allow him to go and he feels wow at once. As soon as the person goes out, they use anger or something and enter back together with the seven that they have gathered. This is why you find out that there are many churches and men of God struggling with deliverance again because the whole service from morning till night is deliverance. There is a balance. He sent forth his word and his word healed them and delivered them. But my only trouble is what people call word is not what God is calling word because their word is not healing. Their word is not delivering. That means it's not the word. Look at me. Ella is a fair lady. If I tell you Ella is coming to see you, expect a fair lady tying something in her hair with, with a ribbon or what is that thing? You see that? Are you getting me? If I suddenly decide to come, am I Ella? If I tell you my name is Ella, this is how many people's revelation. I'm sending the word. It will do this right now. It's not doing it. And the Bible says if it is the word, some things should happen. So if it's not happening, it's not the word. It may be scripture. The word, listen. The word is not just this. Are you getting me? Because until the apostles came, there was no manuscript. But the people understood the word. So what did they call their word? What did they call their word of God? It said, ye are clean through the words that I've spoken to you. That word can clean you. That's what he's doing now. So divine revelations. Let's just look at one scripture. Luke 16. Let's settle this issue once and for all. Please. Can we look at just one scripture? We may not be able to touch the... Honestly, there are three issues I thought we'd be able to talk about. Okay. We're there. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple, royalty, and fine linen. And fed sumptuously every day. 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Listen. Every time Jesus mentioned name, it was not a parable necessarily. It was a real experience. You understand? In Jesus' parables, he described men by what they did, not their names. Which was laid at his gate. Are you seeing the contrast now? It says, full of what? Source. Verse 21. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs, so on and so forth, 24. Okay, no, 23. I saw something I'm looking for there. Ah, we've gone far. Can we go to 22? Let's start from there. And it came to pass that who died? That's Lazarus, right? Lazarus died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. That's another issue there. Hallelujah. And the rich man also died and was buried. So, two of them died. They've now left the earth. Let's see the drama that happened. 23. And in hell, so a definite place, hell, is that true? He lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off. All right? That's Abraham's bosom. And I'll tell you why. And Lazarus, hey, I had a revelation, brothers and sisters, that opened me up. Do you know that unlike the teachings we have been teaching, that Abraham could not give birth because he was impotent? It's not true. Abraham slept with Hagar. Did she get pregnant? What is the impotency about him? This was simple logic. 
I said, come on. Ah, is this not the Abraham we are saying it is the deadness of his body? And this, this guy slept with, with uh, Hagar. And Hagar was strategically positioned by Satan in that place. See, when I show you these things and as we explore, you will see, ah, may God help and redefine our Christianity. You will see that Jacob was not a thief. Jacob was replacing what happened between Isaac and Ishmael. You see that? That thing that looked like that's why it's not called God of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. It's called God of... Ab didn't, with God blind, didn't he see Esau? It's called God of Abraham, Isaac. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. So, it was in Abraham's bosom. All right, 23. And he cried and said, this is the man now in hell. Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the, fin dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. Um, that flame is not just fire like you know. Because I hope you know their physical bodies are in the earth here. So what kind of fire will torture their spirit body? It's not just the kind of your fire here. Spirits can walk through this fire. Are you getting me? This is a strange kind of fire. It's a fire that causes thirst. When it destroys you, it not only are you going through pain, but it makes sure that there is thirst. It can absorb everything and cause you with the feeling of thirst. And it's very frustrating. Look at this guy. He didn't say let him send... Um, something to quench the fire he was asking for a drop of water and Abraham said son remember in your lifetime you received good things this guy received evil but now he's comforted and thou art tormented 26 now divine revelation please listen and beside this there is a gulf between us so that they cannot pass here and there and there we'll talk about this another time Hades Abraham's bosom and so on and so forth 27 then he said, listen, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would send him back to the earth. Are you seeing now? Send him back to the earth to my father's house. So let's see. See, let's walk with what the Bible says. Is that true? Do you believe the word of God? You believe it's the final authority. And you believe it's a more sure word of prophecy. So let's examine the word of God. 28. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into the place of torment. So what was his request? Please, come back to the earth with divine revelation. Abi, go to my family and tell them, ah, I just came back from hell. If they hear you, their heart will melt and they will change. I don't want them to come here. 29, what happened? Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. In other words, it is not God's original strategy to bring people back from the world of the dead to come and bring revelation to the inhabitants of the earth. Abraham was saying, listen, this is not a normal route of God's dealings with people to make them grow. Are you getting what I'm saying? Abraham said they have Moses, the law, and the prophets. They are, they are preachers already. They should listen to them. Verse 30. And he said, nay, Father Abraham, but if one went on to them from the, from the dead, he said what? They will repent. Is that true? 31. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Listen. So these teachings of people going and coming, say they went to the dead and they came back with messages and they saw this and that and that the bible tells us the living and the dead have no relationship is it in your bible is it in your bible that there is something that separates the living and the dead it is appointed unto man to die once and after that the judgment i believe in the resurrection are you getting what i'm saying but by divination people's spirits have been invoked and a lot of things have happened can i tell you 
many of these places these people went to were certain realms in the spirit. They had never been there. Please get what I'm saying. Some of these beings they encountered were not Jesus Christ. They encountered spirits. If you see a spirit in the realm of the spirit, you will still need spiritual intelligence to relate with them. Because Satan can appear as an angel of light. Jesus said it when he sent the 70 when they return. He said, I've seen Satan's next strategy. The next strategy is not to be a demon again. He has translated himself as an angel of light. And he's now going to go to pulpits as angel of light. He was revealing to them a strategy. He wasn't just telling them that Satan has just fallen like that. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. Satan saw that Jesus could give his authority to men and they could legislate on his behalf. It gave Satan an idea of the next strategy. He said, why not I translate myself and come as an angel of light, wear suit and start gathering these people rather than killing them, let me use them. So Jesus began to tell the disciples, I'm praying for you immediately. I've seen something that will happen. Satan has now changed his state to become an angel of light. And he's moving around as elders in churches, moving around as overseers, moving around as different things and recruiting men who are entering deception and delusion without knowing. But we are this army that God is granting us light alongside many other remnants across the surface of the earth. And we are the ones who will break the hold of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let me show you one more scripture. These are the scriptures that talk about out-of-body experiences. Paul now, the apostle himself. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Please, let's rush. One error we have to kick out of the body of Christ. The messages the people bring. Notice, listen. The Bible says, you shall know a tree by what? It's fruit. That's whatever proceeds from that tree. Is that not true? That means, like, who, who said it? I, I think it was Mike that said, everything God creates, he leaves an imprint of himself. If God gives you a word and it's from him, there will be something about his karagma on that word. How many people, tell me the truth, have been comforted by the recent divine revelation teachings? How many that you know? There are so many people who have gotten into religiosity. People locked up their businesses. People packed out of school. Other people went somewhere. People just killed a lot of things. Fashion designers stopped their businesses. They are broke now. They are suffering because they told them that anything, anything at all, Oh, if you see Yvonne, it came from the, the marine power. Uh, if you understand Satan, you know that he does not have the power of creation. He has an ability to mimic and corrupt that which is created. Are you getting my point? Now, I, I, you can, everybody has his personal belief and all of that. I'm not, but I'm just saying the reasons people are giving, there is only one reason why people are in hell. Rejecting the gift of salvation that Jesus brings. Are you getting my point? Oh, a man of God did this. This water was for Bishop and he quickly drank it and when he was going out, car hit him and he found himself. That means all of us are going to hell. You see that? He's killing what the Bible calls the assurance of salvation. So many people, even preachers, they don't know again whether they are saved or not. Hallelujah. Many people don't know whether they are saved or not. And now the only way, because that's the next thing I wanted to talk about, is the false presentation of the gospel of holiness. Because there is the authentic gospel of holiness. I tell you, this one may, is probably one of the biggest disasters that has happened to the church. What has been taught to be the gospel of holiness is not what Jesus taught. Are you getting my point now? Because a lot of people believe they are going to go to heaven based on the things that they have kept and avoided or done this and that. No, sir. 
Hallelujah. You have no right to take a revelation and begin to yoke it on people based on your perception of truth. You see, let me tell you something. The army that God is raising is an army that must remain as students. We must create a posture that shows that we are students such that you are not ashamed to confront the revelations you have held as authentic when you see a higher light. We must have that humility. There's nothing embarrassing to accept that, look, I may not have seen it in this light. I was blind, but now I see. The Bible talks about a man called Apollos. He was a learned man in Acts 18, the last few verses. And the Bible says, but you knew only the baptism of John. Is that true? And then Aquila and Priscilla came. They called him and they expounded to him more perfectly. And he was humble enough to receive. And then he now went to the temple and began to debate and argue intelligently. There are lots of people in the body of Christ who are under bondage. Terrible bondage. That innocently came but it's a product of the spirit of deception. For instance, there are many people who believe that if I, let me use a lady, come. If I give this lady a hug more, ah, this, this may be a problem. I've done something, I've compromised. It can cost me my salvation. And so because I have to shift to that religious mode. Listen, please. I'm not criticizing any, any church. Are you following me now? This is an apostolic teaching. It's a teaching to the body of Christ. Salvation is personal. Your dealings with God is personal. And it's time for us to kick the walls that are stopping us from entering the authentic experience of the kingdom. Because of this right now, the guy can sit down. He does not yet have the ability to conquer lust. But religious mold has made him to know or to feel that, okay, you must confirm. And then people are looking at him and he looks like a sanctimonious brother. Whereas he's dying with masturbation because that's the only thing he can do. And the devil says, this is exactly what I want. And then he uses it to bring condemnation. And the guy gets up. And before men, he's wonderful. And he's struggling. And the sister is struggling. And they go back and keep doing it. There are all kinds of atrocities happening in our churches. Pastors sleeping with members. Many things are happening. Everybody carries a nice cloth and we come. And hide under this demon called religion. Hallelujah. That does not mean we'll be lawless. This is the balance again. Because some other people, in an attempt to address this just like me, they tell people, okay, fine, don't be religious, don't do this, dress anyhow, do what you want to do, say anything, so you can be in the church, I can be preaching, and a lady can just come, and I'll just hold her, give her a nice peck, and say, sweet, how you look sweet. And you sit down. Those garbages will be part of what will exit out of the body of Christ. There is a lot of another dimension of imbalance. Are you getting my point now? We have all kinds of carelessness. I believe that these things are not the things that determine salvation. But then th there are some things that just don't make sense. A man of God comes hanging all kinds of chains around him with all kinds of rings, tearing his jeans, sagging them. I mean, I'm not talking of a guest, some a little youth meeting or boot camp. This is the, the, the default. He's the overseer of the ministry. He comes with his glasses, comes and all. That is nonsense. It's a spirit of seduction. Hallelujah. A woman comes on stage and she's preaching. Half of the message, the brothers are not following. Their minds are, they are just struggling. Lord, I will make heaven. I need to grow. This is another balance. So let me balance it very quickly. Because there are a group of immature revivalists arising. In their bid to contain these things in the flesh. I'm just telling people, be as lawless as you can be. That's a sign that we are out of the law. Balance. 
We're a disciplined army. We are not idiots. Liberty is not rebellion. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Second Corinthians 12 from verse 3 to 4. Did I say? From verse 3 to 4. Verse 3. And I knew such a man, Paul speaking, listen please. Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. For how that he was caught up into paradise and had what? Unspeakable words which are not lawful for men to what? Is that in your Bible? That means all these ones that people go. Have you not seen that many times when the apostles see revelation, he tells them, seal this. It's for an appointed time. But now people come back with every message. This is deception. Are you getting my point now? There are a few people, however, who we have judged their revelations based on the integrity of God's word. And we have found that their messages have brought healing and hope to the body of Christ. For such kind of people, we commend them and we endorse them. But even at that point, their word does not become the final, the final, uh, what do we call it now? This thing that they, yardstick. I cannot begin to run my ministry after Mary Baxter's vision. Are you getting my point? I've had a lot of visions. I live in the realm of visions. I can never run ministry just based on visions. Ask the leaders. Every time I see anything, no matter how authentic the experience is, the word of God must prove it, not confirm it. Prove it. Prove it. The Bible didn't say confirm all things. It said prove all things. If you are looking for confirmation, you will find it. You will find a scripture that endorses a man sleeping with a woman, although they are not married. It's in the Bible. The Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it speak any language you want. The Bible did not say use the Bible just to confirm things. Prove it. Test the spirit behind it. Everybody now is looking for confirmation. So we get the revelation from all kinds of realms. That's the reason why you go to native doctors and the rest, you see Bibles there. Because since it's Bible you want, they keep it there for you. When it's time to do the spell, they say, lay your hands on the Bible and swear that you will be faithful. And you swear, but they will still do their demonic things. And you will be convinced that because there was a Bible there, it was God. Because of this deception. You don't use the Bible for confirmation. The Bible proves all things, yet nothing proves it. When I talk of Bible, I'm not just talking about the error of men. I'm talking about the edited spirit word that is given. Hallelujah. What do I talk about again? I want to show you something. One other error in the body of Christ is neglecting the reality of spiritual laws. I said it. Everybody say it after me, both inside and outside. Spiritual laws abound. They exist. They are real. As real as physical laws. Look at me. Do you know why God did not kill Cain? When he sinned, because he knew that there were spiritual laws at work. Are you getting my point? And those laws will catch up with him. Are you following me now? When you violate certain things and some things happen to you, it's not like God brought it. There are laws. Are you getting my point? Jump from this building now, praying in tongues as you are jumping, for no reason. It's not like they threw you to destroy you that you expect... You expect the hand of God. Just jump from it. What do you think will happen to you? Because of the existence of a law. Now watch this. Regardless of that law, a plane still moves. Is that true? Does the movement of the plane stop the fact that there is that law? It means it's operating by another law that shields it. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Curses are real. Yokes are real. Manifestations of witchcraft in lives and families are real. They are very real. Listen, these are spiritual laws. What light does for us is to tap into what Christ has done and exempt ourselves. Are you getting me? Let's look at one scripture and then we'll pray. That does it for today. Just one scripture. I want to show you a scripture. Psalm 64. Let's trace these activities of those we call familiar spirits. Every time I teach, it's always in my culture to try to bring balance. There is a lot of junk about deliverance, demonology, and so on and so forth. However, I believe that there is an accurate perspective that we can look at to gain understanding. Hear my voice, oh God. This was the psalmist praying by revelation. Preserve my life from the fear of the enemy too. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. Verse 3. Hmm. Who wet their tongue like a sword. That means these guys speak certain things. And bend their bows to shoot their arrows. Even bitter words. Verse 4. He said that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly, they do shoot at him and fear not. Verse 5. It says, they encourage themselves in an evil matter. They, com they commune of lyingness privately. They say, who shall see them? 6. They do what? They search out. Who are these people that search out? They go to an extent. Where did they write it? That they go back to archives and search out iniquities of families. Are you following me now? This is in your Bible. They search out iniquities. He said they accomplish a what? Diligent search. They are meticulous. When God opened my eyes to this, it surprised me. Are you getting my point now? Have you read that word, blotting out every handwriting? So there are handwritings, correct? There are ordinances. The Bible says they search out iniquities. Hallelujah. Maybe at another time I will continue this teaching of these angels that I told you. Because when they fell, listen, they wanted to translate themselves back to the angelic state they did not know that god had the power to stop them so in an attempt to translate themselves back they were stopped they are the ones who have become demons today are you getting me so they need material bodies to find expression this is the basis of traditionalists this is the basis of a lot of things that we celebrate in the rampant outbreak of the prophetic that we call word of knowledge you see it they search out i'm not saying everything is corrupt are you getting my point now but i'm telling you that many of these things otherwise how can a herbalist look at you how many of you have seen these guys that scam and swindle people in a car and sometimes they will give you an they will take you to one baba right and give you an accurate word of knowledge how did they know because they don't have the holy spirit so there must be some spiritual system hmm. they search out iniquities it is on the basis of this search that lucifer satan the accuser of the brethren are you getting me now based on these findings this is what he reports and he says, God, according to your justice, this is what has happened. That means there is a law that should follow this family. Are you getting my point? And suddenly you find out women are not getting married. People are not getting married. Things are not working. Nothing is working. Anybody comes to you for a relationship, 
what will happen to him in two weeks nobody will tell him he will pack his load by himself and go and you are wondering what in the world is going on listen listen it is demonic many of us and our loved ones are victims of these things but they've told you hallelujah just believe it's not there again you say it's not there again you went back it's still there this thing is following you you see patterns i told you this thing satan wants transgenerational allegiance many students you are very brilliant like exam right now you go to the class and you find out that you black out in all sincerity other people think you are lazy you know you are not lazy there is a puzzle somewhere you are trying to understand now you come to the ministers and they tell you did you read yes they say all right i speak over you it is well and demons just mock the men of god and say look at how shallow and the student goes back and gets the same kind of tragedy but when there is light darkness must bow this is the reason why you are hearing testimonies of sudden admissions sudden this and that see brothers and sisters i taught you that every time you speak the realm of the spirit will check what revelation you are standing on are you seeing why some people's words are not powerful because when you speak the devil knows you don't even know what you are saying you are just carrying the delusion of faith and you're just saying i speak leave this family now based on what what is the spiritual intelligence that sponsors that statement when you have it there is light in your spirit and it is that light that will force that dimension of darkness that's why sometimes you can see as we are teaching the power of god just breaks out and demons are living or maybe during the miracle service these things are not magic it's a product of light are you getting my point as you're sitting under this teaching now a lot of things are suddenly coming in your mind are you getting me now it's now making sense to you why your father was walking although an elder in church he grew to a certain height and he fell and that's exactly what has been happening he went for deliverance and fell down he got up and the same thing has happened with that it has even gotten worse have you seen people who come and receive some miracles and go back and their families become worse it's a spiritual blackmail to discredit the ministry of the men of god so that they will say they got powers from darkness not everybody got power from that are you getting my point now you see how complicated the body of christ is at this point that's why we need accuracy please don't miss the meetings because there is a there is a construction there is a we want to go back to this foundation what is responsible for the darkness in our lives nothing just happens brothers and sisters as you're seated right now you know that this word you are hearing is the deliverance of your family this word you are hearing some of us who are parents here and are seated we know that this is the puzzle behind the things that are happening hallelujah but it will take light brothers and sisters it takes spiritual intelligence during the monday counseling i was ministering to a lady and as soon as she came and i casted out the spirit and at once the lady just lay down and the lord opened my eyes at once and i saw the spirit in the realm of the spirit it was laughing and i said the lord rebuke you the protocol were here and the, the lady jacked back up somebody would have said thank you jesus and he just get up say, ah, that's it and the demons would say kai men of god of these days they are not powerful at all say after me the light of god is upon me taking away every darkness and by the power of the holy spirit i become a, an agent of healing prosperity deliverance and grace to all around me and my family members
this is what is responsible for many things in our families. This is why you find out that certain tribes and certain geographical places are prone to certain attitudes. We say these things do not happen, but we are seeing it. There is a spirit upon the continent of Africa that is responsible for what is happening. Hallelujah. You see people come from certain places. You see people come from Plateau State. You see people come from Kaduna State, from Kogi State, from Lagos, from the river and areas. You see patterns that are happening. Yet we say, oh, it, there's, there's nothing wrong. I'm okay. Just declare that I'm okay. And you say, I'm okay. And the demon say, I'm fine too. I'm fine with you. I like this revelation you're having. I'm fine with it. But when light strikes, see, there are many of you based on this revelation, you will start calling home and your parents will start telling you, what is this dream that I'm having? What is, you will see that there are shiftings. Know that it's a response to what is happening. It's already happening in some families right now. You are seeing it. You Something you just know, you can't explain. But you know that certain foundations, these demon spirits are saying, who is this? Who is this? This is le a level of light that is notable. And they, they begin to walk. But you see, light does not beg darkness. Authentic light comes and comes to conquer. Hallelujah. This is the mystery behind this healing of HIV and all of these things you are seeing. When you understand them, no man of God will boast and brag in himself. Because in all sincerity, when you know this, it's just a proper application of spiritual intelligence. Hallelujah. It's like clapping for yourself because you took your bath. You say, what? I'm so impressed that I can bath. What is special about that? You can clap for a baby because you say, this is amazing. Ha! You bath yourself. The child will say, yes. Yeah. Say, clap for yourself. And he claps. Now, imagine that Sam comes to see me and I just said I, I finished bath and Sam will say boy am I impressed a time will come what we celebrate as power will take another dimension what men of God have camped around it will be ordinary people who will be doing it because of the higher dimensions of grace are you getting me time for miracle service we will just say you go and bring those who you healed, delivered, prayed for, and come. We testify together and receive greater grace. Do you know the training you are receiving now is such that it puts you to work immediately. And your Jerusalem is your family. Anyone who is not concerned about his family is, so, is a sign that something is wrong with you. Bishop, a pretty lady with nobody to marry her. Get it into the 40s. Nobody to marry her. People say it's just like that. The ratio of men to women is so on and so forth. What is all that? Straight up. God is going to be breaking the chains of delayed marriage. Lift your hands, everybody. Hey! Delay. The Lord is instructing me to cause that spirit that came from all kinds of ancestral activities. Believe it or not, wickedness is real. It has tied down many of us, even maritally, especially our families. Hallelujah. You're going to shout that name, Jesus, one more time. And as you shout that name, anyone under the sound of my voice, whether you or your family members, you may not even know that this may be an influence over your life. But tonight in this pool of Bethesda, as you shout that name, my God will visit you and tear apart anything that is causing a delay. Lift your hands. Goodness, I see many ladies who will receive their deliverance right now. At the count of three, with the clash of the symbol alone, one, two, three. Jesus. Now I cost that spirit. I cost that spirit. Powers, powers of that.
darkness, spirit husband, spirit wife, I curse you, I curse you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I curse you, bring them out. I curse you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Release their marriages. Every spirit that you have been covenanted to, that is stopping you, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, bring them out. Get your marriage. Be open. Get your marriage. Be open. Get your marriage. Be open. Get your marriage that has been tied down. Hallelujah. We are still going to pray. This is not all of it. Hey. Hallelujah. There must be a breaking. Right now it will happen. Some of you, it may not be directly on your life, but your family members. The sword of judgment is coming upon altars of darkness that say you will not marry. Lift your hands. My God, I thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost. When I count three, shout that name. That power must let you go. That power must let you go. I come tonight with an apostolic unction in the name of Jesus. Hear my sound in the realm of the spirit that at the count of three, let God's people go. One, two, three. Let them go. I command the release. Exodus. Exodus. From this land of delay. Exodus. I prophesy. I decree. I declare. Establish it. They must go tonight. They must go tonight. They must go tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This row, just lift your hands. Just this row, lift your hands. Because I see the angels of God standing. And I'm wondering why they are concentrated on this row. Listen, when I count three, I see the angels of God moving with cups, but they have fire in them and they'll be pouring it on people. It's still an aspect of deliverance. At the count of three, this will happen. Thank you, my God. One, two, three. Let the angels move right now. Let there be a movement, a stirring, a stirring. A stirring, a separation, a stirring by the power, the fire, the power, the fire of the Holy Ghost. I hear the chains falling, falling. I hear the chains falling. There is power in the name. Of Jesus, there, there is, is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. 
So break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. Gabriel, who is Gabriel? Gabriel. Gabriel. The Lord is ministering to me. Gabriel. I give the chains for it. Gabriel. I give the chains for it. Bring this lady. Chains break. Chains. Let her go now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Look at this lady has been tied down. Hallelujah. This is the cause of hardship on our family. There's nothing that they do that will succeed. It doesn't matter what happens. But right now, I instruct you because I see you in the spirit realm. Go. Go right now. Go. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Let her go. The same thing is happening to that lady. Let her go now. Let her go. One or shall lay your hands on her. Both of them. Both of them. Go. Go right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. I command in the realm of the Spirit. Go. Break chains. Break. Hallelujah. Now listen. All the people in front here. God brought them out. I'm not speaking to them. I'm speaking to every spirit that was identified. You know my voice. At the count of three, I instruct you to let God's people go. At the count of three, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, you are leaving God's people now. One, two, three, go. Go, 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 go. Come out of them right now. Come out of them now. Bring that lady. Bring that lady. Hey! I give the chains for him. This lady is acutely under demonic oppression. Acutely. Bring her. Change for me. Yeah. Yeah. I give the chains for me. Come. Just leave her. She will come. I give the chains. I give the chains for me. How can a lady do this? Come back. Come and kneel down here. Right now. Leave her. Leave her alone. Come right now. Hey. You just leave her. You will see the power of God in this place today. Hallelujah. Listen. I want to pray for people with pain in the chest. A number of people with pain around the chest. Pain around the chest region. Hallelujah. Lay your hands there right now. Ulcer. Peptic ulcer. Change. Leave her, she will come right here by the power of the Holy Ghost. Please lay your hands. As I pray for you, listen, a number of you are going to feel something just leave you. When that happens to you, please run and come out here. Enough, you will literally feel something leaving you. When that happens, let's have those people here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lay one hand and lift one hand up. And let me pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just help me with the Simba. Right now, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed. Whatever is holding you, peptic ulcer, be healed. I command that spirit out of them now. Out of them now. Out of them now. That spirit, leave them now. Be healed. Be healed. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. Now check yourselves. Check yourselves. Do what you couldn't do. Hallelujah. I'm seeing someone with a severe pain on your kneecap. Just this kneecap. Very severe pain. In fact, it even affects you sometimes when you are walking. Where? Which of them? How long has it been? Okay. Lay your hands there. Both of you. Pastor, right? You are a pastor? Okay, no. I, I, lay your hands. That devil is a liar. Look at me. What's wrong with you? Huh? I've been having this knee problem. The bone is very tiny. The bone is tiny. And the load is heavy. And the load is heavy on it. I even felt Hold my hands. Body. It's okay. Bone grow. In the name of Jesus. Grow. I cast that them. Grow. I command you. Grow. Grow. Lay your hands and I'll pray for you right now. As I lay my hands upon you. Please test yourself and do what you couldn't do. Thank you, Jesus. Let the power of God come upon you right now. Please check yourself as I pray for you. Right now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. God is doing miracles already. Check yourself. Any pain? Any pain? Yeah. Just no, no, no. Come on, give Jesus praise. God is healing people right now. Any pain? Any pain? Don't pretend it. Don't worry. God is healing you. Are you feeling any pain? Do what you couldn't do before. Look at this. Come on now. Look at this. Thank you, Jesus. Hold my hands. God is going to set you free. Hold my hands. We need to pray for you. Because I see you lying down. Touch that guy. Just look at me. God is setting your family free. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost, what is this that I'm seeing? I'm seeing money, but it's tied with snakes. This is what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. The Lord is bringing financial restoration. Lord, let it be. I stretch my hands. By the force of the Holy Ghost, using him as a point of contact in the name that is above all names, let there be breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Victoria. Victoria. I'm hearing the name Victoria. Please, if I call your name or your case, just hurry up. We have a lot to do so that we can. Victoria. There are two Victorias outside. There are two Victorias that are supposed to come outside. Where are you coming from? Outside here. Yeah? Victoria. There's one more Victoria outside. Both of you are outside. The Lord will visit you. How are you, my dear? Are you married? Yes, sir. You know why? Do you know why? No, That's one of the reasons why you came here, B. Yes, Is that not so? Yes, sir. You were praying to God and you told God to visit you, man. Yes, sir. Is that, do you know me? No, Have sir. we talked with you? No, sir. The devil that has stopped your marriage must let you go, right? Amen. Now. You believe that? Yes, sir. Because there was a time a man came into your life 
and he was he looked like he was serious uh, for reasons you cannot even explain yes, he just sir. gave flimsy reasons and left yes sir Yes, sir. Do you know why he left? I don't know. This is what I'm telling you. I see this all the time. I'm seeing the face of an old woman. It's not your face I'm seeing. This is what is driving men from you. It doesn't matter what kind of man comes. Something must happen and he will leave. But tonight, we see the chains falling. Hold my hands. I curse that spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. I need to pray for you too. Lay your hands on your stomach. If I don't pray for you, when it's almost time for marriage, they are going to tell you that there is a cyst growing in your stomach. Because sometimes you feel pain. Is that not? Even now, the Even now you are feeling pain. Yes, sir. Especially during your period. Yes. The pain is very I severe. And you have sometimes even irregular is when it's supposed to stop. It doesn't stop at that time. Yes, it is this thing you want to destroy. Hold my hands. Break chains. Break. You will feel like fire going through your stomach. The pain will go right now. Thank you, Jesus. Check yourself. Check it. Do hit yourself. Any pain. Any pain. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. I release you. We call your husband, not a man, your husband. Wherever he is, I connect you. You will come and testify in the name of Jesus. This year, 2014, I lay my hands upon you and I release you to your marital destiny. Come, my dear. Where's your mother? Is she fine? I need to pray for her. The devil wants to put sickness in your mother. Father, for your mercy. I want to pray for somebody. Listen, this is a family and there is no reason to be embarrassed. That lady on pink, just touch her. Come. No, just where she, stand there, look at me. Lift your hands and look at me. Just look at me. Father, as you deliver her, let the power of God go to her family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let the power of God touch you and set you free and set your family members free in the name of Jesus Christ. Why are you all out? Eh? You are all Victoria. There's someone here. Please don't feel embarrassed. They took you to a herbalist. Listen. They took you to a herbalist and they gave you something to drink. Please, who is that person? I'm not saying you are bad. This is not, this is a family. Please, it's very important. The Lord is instructing me. I want to pray for you and break that thing. Please, this is a family thing. It's not even like it's just you. Please, we need to break this. There's, there's no reason to be embarrassed. Hallelujah. Can I pray for your mother? Hold my hands. Father. Sickness will never return to the mother. I set you free right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come, Victoria. Look at me. May God visit your family. Please, this person I've spoken about, please make sure you come out. Don't, don't be embarrassed. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. They took you to a herbalist. They gave you something. One kind of... You are the one? You see the one? You are the one? This thing is affecting you. Wait. Stand up. Look at me. Don't feel bad. Just stand up. Stand up. Let me talk to you. Look at me. If I don't pray for you, you will die this year. Because this thing is going to kill you. Are you getting my point? That's why I called you out. Please remove his glasses. Hold it for it. Let, me, let it not break. Hold my hands. Because this guy sees dead people in his dreams. And he doesn't even know why. Hold my hands. 
Hold it with both of your hands. The power of God will come through your body right now and you'll be delivered. Blotting out every handwriting and ordinance. Right now, be free. Everything you have taken inside your body that is destroying you, go! Be free right now. Sister, let me pray for you. Look at me. There is bad luck in your life. Everything works well for others until it gets to your point. Huh? Is that true? We need to pray very seriously. Even you, you are worried about your relationship with Jesus Christ. Huh? You know what I'm talking about, right? You see, listen, it's either you are for God completely. Part of the reason why a lot of people get into trouble is that you're halfway with God, halfway with something else. Hallelujah. Tonight, part of what will happen to you is that a fire will be planted in your spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I pray for you, my dear? Look at me. Why am I seeing rings on your hand? Physically, there are no rings, but I'm seeing rings on all your ten fingers. Look at me. I need to pray for you. Huh? You need to be very, very serious with God. Welcome home. God loves you and he wants to transform your life. Huh? But for now, you'll be delivered. Right? Thank you, Jesus. Right now, I curse this spirit. Leave her now. I see you in the realm of the spirit and it's time for you to go. Take away this devilish thing you are put in her life. Right now. Out. I hear the chains falling. You are not standing in for yourself, but for your elder sister. God wants to visit her. Lay your hands on your stomach, because what is happening to her will happen to you. Lord, I take out anything you did not plant in her sister's body. Even right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, let there be restoration in the name of Jesus. I need to break the spirit of loss from your life. Huh? I need to break it. I'm not saying you're a bad girl. Are you getting my point? Hold my hands. Just look at me. You are a devil of darkness. Leave this girl now. Go! Out of her now. Break chains. Your eyes is open, but in the spirit you are blind. And God needs to open your eyes. That's why you are in a lot of confusion. Father, let her eyes be open right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I break the spirit of timidity from your life. And you too. Same thing. Same thing. Out! Leave her. God has not given us the spirit of fear. on your stomach. Just look at me. Lord, set her free from this pain. Something will come upon you right now and that demonic pain will go. Let her go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where's the woman that came with her family from Abuja? Is she here? Quickly, madam, come with all your children. Please, all of them. Celebrate them as they come quickly. Break. Your time of visitation has come. That devil that oppresses you. Just give flowing strings. Please just play something for me. Hallelujah. 
witchcraft this is what is destroying the whole family witchcraft this is not just the issue of prayer and fasting this is the issue of deliverance out of this right where is the son come something comes upon you you feel like something comes upon you and when it comes upon you you do a lot of destructive things you will even have power that ordinarily you won't be able to have is that true you feel that kind of thing you'll be delivered right Amen. madam i need to pray even for the finance of the family it's not like you are lazy but you are suffering for nothing is that true please help us is this mic working hallelujah don't worry we'll just use one is that yes sir i need to pray for you huh when someone works so hard so hard and then in the end of it there is nothing to write home about it's an error but the lord will correct it my brother the lord bless you you're born again you love jesus yes, sir. just you or your children myself and my children hold my hands my brother look at me jesus will set you free right now right you believe that hold my hands let's cast that devil of darkness out of your life father by your mercy in the name of jesus go that's the end it's free i need to pray for you you're going to feel like fire from my hands to your hands and within two weeks you will have a major financial restoration two weeks you believe it Jesus, confirm your word right now. Out of her, now. Out of her, that devil of darkness. I command financial restoration for you. Where are the children? Both of you. You love God. You are going to teach the word. You. Huh? This boy, he's going to love God and he's going to, you know this now. God has already told you. Yes, he has been. God has told you. He, he, he has, has been, been into it. He has, he has been, been into it. Yes. Because the Lord showed me. I saw him standing with a Bible. And the Lord says he will teach the word. Hallelujah. I'll pray for you. You don't teach the Bible just with English. There is an anointing. Tonight I lay my hands upon you. Let that spirit of wisdom and understanding. Come upon you right now. Step into a new dimension. I open your understanding. To understand scriptures in the name of Jesus Christ you love God but we must pray so that because of the quest for establishment you will not join bad people you want to be successful but what God does not give you you cannot get huh? because there are bad people around your life you are a good person but there are all kinds of bad people and we must pray huh? lay your hands on your chest there's something that will leave you. You did not even know when you started fraternizing with what is not of God. But tonight, my God, let there be deliverance. You are literally going to feel something leaving your chest right now. Let him go. Right now. Thank you, Jesus. Restore this family, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Go and return with your testimony. Where is the guy that has been skipping from university to university? His sister brought him. Are you here? The last Nsuka, bring him quickly. His time of deliverance has come. Everywhere this guy goes, spirits torment him. He has, come, and, come and stand here. This is your night of visitation. It's over. Look at this guy. Listen. I want you to appreciate what God is doing in this place. There are people whose lives are, I'm not saying clap. The greatest gift you can give anybody is not money, is not car, is to bring him to a place where he can find genuine restoration. Hallelujah. How many universities? Come, you are, come. Are you not the one who brought him? How many universities? Same university. They've, they've driven him? Twice. Twice. You think it's normal for somebody to get admission twice? UNN, right? Nsuka? Yes, sir. God will deliver him. Amen. Come, my brother. It's not... It's not like you are lazy. Huh? 
it's not like you are lazy. Because I'm seeing something like foam on his mouth. And you cannot even articulate. It's, like, it's as if you are manipulated. God is going to set you free. You believe this? Yes. Lord, you reign forever. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Look at me. Something will leave you right now and you'll be free. Let him go. Now! Lord, restore to him the years that the canker worm has eaten. Restore to him the years that the palmer worm has eaten. In the name of Jesus Christ, restore to him. Restore to him. Let him rise up a brand new person. I worship you. Hallelujah. If there's any case of barrenness here, whether for yourself or for your loved ones, please come out here. If you're married and you're experiencing barrenness, let them stand in the front. If you're standing here for yourself, Please don't just be emotional. We are not joking here. This is very serious business. Look at me. Look at me. Listen. Let me tell you something. And don't please don't find it offensive. Every case of barrenness is demonic. What did I say? Every. every I don't care what the doctors say. Whether they say there is a womb or no womb. The, the person... Who is having this situation may not be a bad person. But I'm telling you, it must be resolved spiritually. Hallelujah. Please keep playing. You're tired. Play the strings. Ladies and gentlemen, see the number of people standing for loved ones. How many of you are standing in for yourself? To your sister. Just look at me. Look at me. She's going to be delivered right now where she is. From me. Don't worry. Just look at me. Just look at me. Let her go. You are feeling something coming up on you right now. Let her go. Now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Whether they say fibroid or no womb. It's irrelevant. I'm just telling you that this is a demonic issue. But when God steps in, you won't go back. You can't go back to the way it used to be. Before his presence came and changed you. Just try to connect and hold your hands together and lift it up. Madam, come let me pray for you. Look at me. How many years? And then he stopped. We are going to pray. Look at me. This is a family thing. Hold on. Because it's not only you. Who else? My junior sister. Your junior sister has the same thing. She has never had a child. That's to tell you this is a spirit. But as God sets you free, he will set her free too. Onegi kagi, ekele di wigi, onye ne mema. Onye di kagi, ekele di wigi, onye na poria. Look at me. Onye di kagi, go and have your child. Onye ne mema. Father, in the name of Jesus. I open up your womb to receive baby boy. You will come back with your baby boy. Lift your hands and sing before I Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I'm going to pray for you. Whether you are standing in for yourself or for your family members, 
the fire of God will come upon you and that person in question will be released you are standing as a point of contact my God I pray that from my left to my right in the name of Jesus let the angel of fruitfulness move across this place at the count of three one two three right now wombs be open wombs be open take it take it take it take it miracle children take it for your loved ones take it take it from the realm of the spirit whoever you are standing in for i command all medical complications go all medical complications go i cause fibroid i cause every cyst in the name of jesus all those who do not have wounds we put brand new wounds now brand new wounds in the name of jesus the fire of the holy ghost is burning a lot of things burning a lot of chaff every spirit of miscarriage i cause it right now i cause it right now i cause it right now the spirit of miscarriage every spirit that comes to eat up children in the womb i arrest you you are bound you remain bound hallelujah i prophesy to every one of you here make sure you tell your loved ones we pray for them that in the name that is above all names they will not only take in they will give birth like the hebrew women we forbid cs in the name of jesus they will give birth normally no devil will eat up any child there will be no miscarriage and for those who have stayed a long time we command twins we command triplets let there be a restoration i provoke it by the hand of god please don't think we're just entertaining prophecy does not just reveal it creates it creates it creates i tell you a lot of things are happening pregnancy is not just when a man meets a woman mary said be it unto me we put miracle children in their wombs right now from the realm of the spirit hallelujah god bless you please go back to your seat we see miracles everywhere miracles everywhere hallelujah now very quickly if you came here specifically for healing i want to minister to the sick right now specifically for healing or you brought someone sick now is your time please quickly ushers coordinate them so that they will line up very well you came here with any infirmity please If you brought someone, now is the time to bring them out. The worship team will lead us in a powerful time of worship as we rebuke that devil. No matter how far you are, wherever you are, please find your way to the front. You came here for healing. It's called a miracle service. It's not just a name. please I need to pray for sick people fast because we need to release breakthroughs in other areas there are people who your own is not sickness your own is breakthrough please just line up those under the anointing just leave them there is a pool some of you as you are standing here right now the power of God will even begin to touch you before we minister now we are going to do it very fast 
Hallelujah. Listen, it doesn't matter what your sickness is, right? The anointing is not just the ability to heal. It's the ability to bring solutions to any kind of problem. Are you getting my point? So while you are standing, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I'm not going back the same. I'm tired. This is it. This is it. Worship team leaders, Bishop, please come help me. Pastor Williams, hallelujah. Please, those of you who are seated, make sure you are not just seated watching. Be praying in tongues. We will minister very quickly. In case you are seated and you have not written your prayer request, let's save time. Now is the time to start writing your prayer request. And our online community, those streaming online, please, they can bring their prayer request. Hallelujah. Father, thank you because of your power. Let every sick body be healed. Let every sick body be healed in the name of Jesus. What's our genotype? What's our genotype? I'm not ham. Who brought her? Mother, where are you? Where's the mother? You are the mother. What's her genotype? S -S. She's SS. Don't worry. We're going to change it right now. Huh? Not just her, but this is something that will need to happen in the family. There is sickness parading itself as blood condition. It's not blood condition, anything change this lady's genotype right now baby let SS change to AA right now in the name of Jesus Christ thank you father and I cast the spirit of infirmity from her life in the name of Jesus Christ perfection in your body in Jesus name Your son too is SS. All of you are SS. Huh? You too, you are SS. Hallelujah. Madam, don't cry. Weep not. For there is one who is worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. Hallelujah. Your child too. Can somebody collect the child, please? So that I'll pray for her. He's sleeping, so just let him continue his sleep. Father, we change his genotype right now in the name of Jesus. And we rebuke sickness. Please hold my hands. I need to pray for you. There is a lot of poverty in your life. Look at me. Why do people hate you? Huh? Is that true? What? I can't understand why. How can they just hate you just like that? Look at me. The enemy has done this. But tonight God visits you. Change her story, oh God. Change her story. You will return with testimonies of dramatic breakthrough in Jesus' name. All right, let's save time. Healing in your name. Jesus. As I pray for you, as you go back to your seat, make sure you check yourself. Do what you couldn't do. Say Jesus.
of her now. So greatly out of her we pray. Out. Beautiful situation. You wanna join? Be healed right now. I change that medical result. God is going to come on somebody, a lady outside. There is one lady, the power of God will come mightily upon her. Please bring her in. I need to speak to her. The power of God will come very mightily on one lady. Very, very mightily. I can't remember why I called you people, honestly. Let me pray for you. your father is in this meeting. Where is he? I need to talk to him. You are the best. Eh? He's not around. Here. I mean, he's here. You mean? He's in town. He's in town. He's okay, here. I thought he was around. I need to talk to him. Go and tell him that the gates of delay has been shattered. Look at me. Look at me. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? Go and tell your father that the gates of delay has been shattered. Father, confirm your word. I give you praise. Your hands will bring bread to your table. You are a creative person. Make use of your hands. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to specifically deal with certain things right now. Hallelujah. Um. I'm not going to ask you to come out, but I hope that they came out here. 
he wants to rebuke all kinds of incurable diseases. I just want to take one or two minutes and rebuke incurable diseases because if we do not help God's people, medically is incurable. HIV, hepatitis, all these satanic things around. Make sure you never believe these things and settle on them believing that that's how we would be. So please stand up everybody. Stand up please. Please rise up everybody. We want to speak against every medical report that the doctor has said nothing can be done about it and in case you are here and any of your loved ones is in the sick bed please connect with them even as we pray right now hallelujah father I pray right now specifically for incurable diseases we depend on you and we ask for your mercy without your mercy these people are on their way to death Lord, I thank you because you are the resurrection and you are the life. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Anyone with HIV in this place, I declare be healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. HIV be healed in the name of Jesus. Cancer be healed in the name of Jesus. Every form of cancer, every form of cancer be healed in the name of Jesus every kind of hepatitis right now in this place i cause it to its root in the name of jesus christ hepatitis be healed be gone in the name of jesus hallelujah for blood groups who are going to deal with that one when i minister prophetically please lift your prayer requests pass it to the person at the last at the last end Ushers, please walk around all over this building. Hallelujah. Now the Lord is ministering to me. I want to specially pray for families with uncompleted building projects. Please find your way quickly and just stand here. The Lord wants to minister. Just one word I will speak. I want you to believe. I'm not saying you want to build a house, please. The power of God is touching people and changing uncompleted projects. Uncompleted projects. Please believe what I'm saying. I'm not just playing pranks here. As you're standing here, the Lord is going to set people free. Okay, if, if there's no space, just stand where you are and then I'll pray for you. Lift your hands, everybody. It will surprise you. The Bible says how that the hand of God came. Lift your hands. The hand of God came upon Elijah the prophet and he ran. The Bible says he overtook the chariots of Ahaz down to Jezreel. I want to pray. We are going to pray for everybody prophesying speed, but I want to pray because the Lord is ministering to me, specifically for building projects. Some of them are tied down because of finance. Some of them are tied down because of court issues. Some of them are tied down because of diabolic, demonic things. It doesn't matter what category. Sir, Ogasa, God is going to visit you. Because your issue is, it looks like it's money, but it's not money. This is witchcraft. God is going to set you free. Are you getting what I'm saying? Lift your hands, please. My God, I pray. Goodness, there will be a lot of mighty miracles. I want you to believe. Many of you are going to feel literally like fire. It will come on your right hand. It will come on your right hand in a very powerful way. All across here right now, the angel of the Lord will move right now. Right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, 
move right now everything stopping any uncompleted project your right hand the power of god is a prophetic language the right hand of god is power and by that power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus i command every uncompleted project be completed now in the name of jesus be completed now in the name of jesus every power stopping any building project i challenge you right now in the name of jesus every lack of finance responsible i command supplies from heaven supplies from heaven supplies from heaven supplies from heaven every land issue in this place every court issue we resolve it here tonight in the name of jesus christ go and return with mighty testimonies let the hand of god the finisher's anointing let it come upon you and upon your loved ones a finisher's anointing that unction that comes to finish what you have started receive it right now in jesus name god bless you please run back to your seat submit your prayer request very quickly hallelujah please listen there are a number of people here the lord is ministering to me mike can you play strings who is playing please play strings 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 just play strings hallelujah the lord is showing me a few people here please listen you had a dream and in the dream either a dog or a serpent beat you please come out there are a number of people in that kind of situation god is ministering to me that devil is a liar and what please if, if this is if you're part of these people i've mentioned please come out a dog or a serpent i'm just flowing as the holy spirit is showing me because this is very demonic that lady is is, is one of the people and she'll be delivered right now no matter where you are hiding even if you didn't come out here as i pray the power of god will locate you it's a very serious situation please stand up everybody Please stand up, everybody. Bala, you're just going to clash the Simba for me. I'm going to pray. Because this is a very demonic thing. The Lord is ministering to me. This is the deliverance of someone right now. A snake or a, or a dog, an animal, beat you in the dream. It didn't create any effect, but you may not know what it is causing to you right now goodness i see a pruning fork an angel of the lord standing with a pruning fork hallelujah at the count of three as they clash the simba there will be mighty deliverances here and some of you in the crowd as it's happening to them it will happen to you hallelujah father right now let your power begin to move every demonic object in your body right now at the count of three come out jump out and go one two three go 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 out of them out of them some people in the congregation it will touch you there too out of them every foul spirit i'm going to lay my hands on everybody there. out of them 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 please help them 
out of them, out of them, come out, come out, everything that has not been planted by my father that is responsible for your limitation. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, I command deliverance. Oh dear, oh yeah, I command deliverance. Oh yeah, I command deliverance. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you will be delivered, mighty. This is a demonic thing on you. Release her now. Release her now. Now, out. Release her now. Release her now. You must let her go. 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 Let her go. Out. Come out. Out, out, go, go, go. Every devil, remove every demonic ring, every demonic chain, every demonic ring, every demonic chain. Let God's people go right now. Go. Release her right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Bring that baby. Go. Let her go. Now. Let her go. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Take off everything. Take your property. Pack your load on your back. Get set. Go, 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 go. 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 Out of her now. Thou devil of darkness. Out of her. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Out. I break covenants. I break yokes. Every act of witchcraft. I plead the blood and I set you free. Now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, this is the root cause of many problems in our lives and our families. Preachers have told us once you are born again, it's all right. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. You are seeing it by yourself that it's not all right. There is an operation of the kingdom that must separate you with darkness. Some of these people... What is happening to them is responsible for stubbornness, immorality, and we come and preach in church. We say, stop it. It can't be stopped till that devil gives way. Bring this lady for me. Let her go now, once and for all. Remove this demonic ring. I see a lot of rings on her feet, on her hands, Remove it and pack your load and go. 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 See, bro, you should thank me for what I'm doing. I'm preparing your wives and husbands. You just get up and come and meet a lady. And then you don't pray. You see why we tell people to be spiritual. That's why many people keep wondering. 
Why will a brother come to me and run away? Or why will a sister come? I break covenants. This is an usher. This is our own usher. Go. Go. I see you in the spirit. And I command you to go. This spirit that is tormenting this lady. The Lord is showing me. This thing has been in this family for 178 years. This is what God is showing it has nothing to do with her. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's save time. Have you submitted this? Father, let none of these people return with any influence. It must let them go. It must let them go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you see a student will write jam and write wayek and enter the school and all of a sudden become dull and people keep insulting. This child is not good. You think people just smoke because they want to smoke or they sleep around just because they want to sleep around? Brothers and sisters, there are influences and it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to keep the devil where he belongs so that the people of God can enter the reality of their inheritance. That's why you see people who keep testifying. Oh, breakthrough just started happening in my family. You may not know what has been limiting them. That's why here we don't just heal the sick. I told you the anointing is the power of God to solve problems. Any kind of problem. It's not just healing. It's not just wheelchairs. There are destinies that are tied down and they need the power of God. You will be amazed that after you leave this meeting tonight, doors will just be opening. You will see how easy it is and then you will know that something happened to you. It doesn't matter whether you came out here or not. Once you are under the influence of this sound, something is happening to you. I want to pray on this request right now. Hallelujah. Many of you have communicated your thoughts and that of your family members right here. Please, if anyone has not submitted your request, do that very fast. As we pray on these requests, I don't care what you wrote here. May this be the last time you will see it. In the name of Jesus Christ, every pharaoh and every egypt that you wrote and dropped here as surely as the lord god lives this will be the very last time hallelujah stretch your hands and begin to pray in tongues bishop come please pastor williams come as we pray on the request pray in tongues Pray in tongues. Make sure you are praying in tongues. Visitation, oh God. Visit your people. Visit your people, oh God. Let there be breakthroughs. Visit your people. Visit your people. Visit your people. Visit your people. She break the ba la 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 ba. Oh yeah. She get take get take ba 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 ba. Oh rakata ba la la ba. Please stretch your hands. Connect with us. All those online. They should connect with us. Lord, let this be the last time. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh dear, oh yeah, be gay, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh dear, oh yeah, be gay, oh yeah. Bahaya, oh, yeah, 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 oh,
Thank you, Father. Because with you, nothing is impossible. With you, no request is impossible. Anything that is not in existence can be created. Father, we thank you. Because this request cannot defy your power. Thank you, Jesus. Because it is possible. Thank you, Jesus. We see the answers. Lord, we receive in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Because from this night forward, we we'll begin to see the manifestations of everything we wrote here. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for breakthrough for families. Thank you for jobs. Thank you for marriages. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. We celebrate you, O oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. We declare and we speak over these requests. We turn them into testimonies. We turn them into testimonies. We turn them into testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you're a minister of the gospel and you came, you came from another place. What I mean, minister, make sure you're a preacher, a minister of the gospel, you're a ministry, and you came from outside of this state. Please come out. I want to minister to you right now. Hallelujah. Is there anyone like that? Please quickly, quickly, let's save time. Just come and line up here. The Lord will ignite you tonight. Hallelujah. Do ministry with integrity. Do ministry with truth. Ministry is not about money or flamboyancy or manifestation or going on air. It has no, nothing to do with that. Hallelujah. Ministry with integrity, with the fear of the Lord. That who you are in the open is who you will be in the secret. The secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. I want to pray for you. That God will characterize your life and your ministry with signs and wonders. That struggling will end for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands as I pray for you. My God, in the name of Jesus, let something come upon them. In the name of Jesus, let something come upon them. By the power of the Holy Ghost, let something come upon them. In the name of Jesus, let something come upon them. Let something come upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus. We're about rounding up. Please rise up. The prophetic ministration is the greatest part of this meeting as far as I'm concerned. Please stand up everybody. This is the moment I want you to shout amen. We're about to open doors, breakthroughs of all sorts in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Wherever you can hear my voice, make sure that you shout a big amen. Please lift your hands. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. This is not the doing of any man. What you see is an election of grace. When God calls people, he empowers them. There are vessels today carrying anointings that can change people's situations and change people's story. Hallelujah. And I'm about to pray for you that something will truly open up in your life. This is the part you get to receive. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Can you play the keyboard mic, please? Please lift your hands. I 
I want you to shout amen with everything that you have. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, O ye everlasting door. Every gate limiting your progress in the name of Jesus. We shatter that gate into pieces. I shatter it into pieces. Into pieces. I command gates. 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 Hear ye the word of the Lord. Gates. I command. Ephata. Be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. Gates of marriages. Gates of restoration be open. Anyone trusting God for a job here in the name that is above all names, I command miracle jobs now. Miracle jobs now. Miracle jobs now. I provoke your destiny, help us. May they find you. May they help you. May they honor you. For every limitation you have experienced in your life and your finances, in the name that is above every other name, I command breakthrough. Receive breakthrough. Receive breakthrough in every area of your life. Breakthrough. In your academics, break through every result that is not your own. We change it tonight. We change it tonight. Let the angel of God go to every faculty, every department. We command change. Any family that has been victimized in this place, any family that has been victimized in the name that is above all names, whoever planned evil against your family, we judge them this night. Let the sword of judgment rest upon evil doers. Let the sword of judgment, whoever said your family will not lift up their heads, May my God judge them. May my God judge them. Hallelujah. Every ordinance of darkness, every enchantment, every spell that has been written over your life that you will not become what God died, what Jesus died for you to become this night. We blot out those handwritings. We set those altars on fire. Those shrines on fire. And we release you. Anyone here who has suffered delay of any kind. I don't know what area you have suffered delay. Or your loved ones. But I want to pray for you right now. My Bible says, and I will restore to you the years. Canker worms can eat time. They can eat years of men's lives. But I pray, my God and my King right now, I shout it in the spirit, restoration, restoration, restoration. Receive it, restoration. I prophesy, I decree, restoration of joy of peace of finances of opportunities hallelujah there are some of you because of your mistakes of the past certain things have happened in your life and like samson many people are laughing at you and mocking you that will your strength return I want to prophesy to you just like the hair of Samson grew back I call forth anointings 
that left because of indiscipline. I call back opportunities that left people because they misused it. I call it back. I call it back. The God who changes times, may he change times to your favor. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. There will be impartations right now. It is vain to attempt to serve God without the empowerment of the Spirit. There are many of you who are passionate about the things of God. What you need is fire in your life. What you need is grace. What you need is authentic unction. I'm going to pray for you. Let the men around you know you are serving a living God. Lift your hands. It's going to clash the Simba. And I'm going to begin to speak. And there will be impartations of gifts. Prayer altars will come alive. Dry bones will come alive. Make sure, lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're going to shout the name Jesus once and I'm going to begin to speak. Many of you, my God, I pray, especially for those who have never had encounters, dramatic, deep encounters. Let these encounters swallow up spiritual laziness, swallow up prayerlessness. Right now, shout the name Jesus once. Take it now. Receive it. The gift of the Holy Ghost. Fire. Fire. Take it. Take it. Inside and outside. Fire. The spirit of prophecy. Receive it. The healing anointing. I release it upon you. Go and heal the sick. Receive it. The healing anointing. Take it. Prophesy. Visions. I command visions. Visions. Let the vistas of the spirit be opened up to you. Every gift available for your enriching. I command prayer fire. Take it now. Take it now. Prayer fire. Prayer fire. Prayer fire. Reketetete e prokotoba mambrakata e koske e bandapa reketetete reketetete e prokotoba. I found the fire on your prayer altar. It comes back alive. I pray for you right now. The Bible says, because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness, therefore God, even thy God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness. And that oil sets you above your fellows. The anointing for distinguishing. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Everywhere you go, be set apart. Be distinguished. Take it now. Hallelujah. 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 And the Bible says, Esther went to a man called Haggai, the one who took care of the virgins of the king. And he gave her a particular ointment to keep rubbing for one year. And she passed the king once and he found favor. I want to pray for you. That anointing that can cause you to ride sweatlessly, that grace for favor in the name that is above all names. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Shh. 
Sheka Baba Sekete Mam Protoskopa Shoteke Tete Tekete Baba 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 Mam Pratekete Yes, be distinguished. The favor of the Lord is upon you. The favor of the Lord is upon you. It marks you. The favor of the Lord is upon you. It marks you. Hallelujah. 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 There are many of us who are praying and say, Lord, what was I born for? Why did you bring me here? What was I born to do? I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. It says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written. No confusion. A purposeless man will never find fulfillment. I want to pray that God will grant you revelation of the reason why you were born that out of the seven billion people in the earth you were born for a reason therefore my god let the angel that brings revelation visit your people in the name of jesus through dreams through visions through prophetic confirmations receive the mandate of your life receive the blueprint of your life Hallelujah. Every habit that you are struggling with that is mocking your Christian experience, I don't care what it is, pornography, masturbation, anything that is compromising your Christian experience, right now, I judge the spirits behind it. I judge the spirits behind it. And I command them to let you go. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free from every habit. Be free. Hallelujah. For those of you who do not have a zeal to study the word again, it's not like you're not serious. You don't even know what has happened to you. There's no zeal to study the word. Some of you are finding yourself, you were once on fire in terms of your word life. Some of you would pray through the night. Some of you would study. Suddenly, distractions happen. I want to pray right now. Son of man, can these bones live again? And he said, only down the west. I prophesy to you, every dead spiritual life in this place, my God, I pray, let the wind, the east wind that reawakens dead things, that is responsible for resurrection from the east side of the spirit, let that wind blow over your life and bring restoration now. 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 Hallelujah. Listen to me. God wants to make the best out of your life. But you must be willing to yield yourself. There are two kinds of people in this place right now. There are those who have been taking these things of the spirit. Just playing around. You may be born again. But your life is so unpredictable. You're not serious. You know that you need to make it right. There are others who have never made this decision for Jesus. You go to church, you have a Christian name. Hallelujah. And there are others who are backslidden completely and they need to be restored. As I count one to five, those three categories of people, whether you've given your heart to the Lord and you found yourself derailing, or you are praying and saying, Lord, I want to be serious with you from today. Or you are saying, Lord, I'm surrendering everything. As I count one to five, please, I'd like you to run like your life depends on it. God is waiting for you right here. One, please don't wait for anybody. Two, inside and outside. 
it doesn't matter what you have done run 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 i didn't say walk run run like your life depends on it three Jehovah, we praise you. Jehovah, we praise you. We praise your name. We praise your name. want to pray for you. Lift your hands. I salute you for making this decision. This is not unto a man, but this is unto God. Hallelujah. I'd like you to say this after me from the depths of your heart. Please don't play games with God. God is willing to make your life better than you can ever imagine. Now is the time to shame the devil and say enough is enough. Enough, I'm tired enough is enough say after me convincingly from the depths of your heart Lord Jesus I repent of my sins you're not reciting a point make sure you understand what you're saying I repent of my sins and I love you with all my heart forgive me today I make Jesus the Lord of my life I ask for forgiveness cleanse me wash me I receive your life into my spirit from today forward ever and backward never I denounce sin and Satan and I live unto righteousness Holy Spirit come and live in me Make me a new person in the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted and I'll pray for you. Father, receive these ones into your kingdom and your family. Let today be the beginning of a dramatic and a genuine transformation. I break them free from wrong companies. And Lord, I pray that they will be empowered in the inner man to do mighty things for you hallelujah praise the lord now look at me every one of you i congratulate you this is the best decision you would have ever made in your life and i want you to know that no matter what went wrong in your life this is a fresh start hallelujah now tomorrow listen please tomorrow bishop stan will be meeting with you at the chapel just close to the chapel bookstore for the experience of the baptism in the Holy Spirit you need it they'll be guiding you sharing with you a few foundational things it's very very important time is what sir 5 p.m. prompt please 5 p.m. prompt for now I like you to follow the ushers they are waving at you and they'll have your information we'll pray for you and we'll follow you or God bless you please follow them God bless you. Follow them very quickly. Hallelujah. Let's take the following announcements very quickly. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, this is your first time, aside from those who are going out, if this is your first time of worshiping with us here at Koinonia, we love you and we want to bless you. Please, wherever you are, just find your way to the front right now. God bless you. Please find your way quickly, quickly. Koinonia, celebrate them. This is not your best. There are people who came all the way from Jos, all the way from Abuja, different parts. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. This is Koinonia, the ministry put together by Eternity Network International. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate and we celebrate you. We meet every Friday. This is not our venue. Our venue is CGC. We had to make an arrangement because there was something going on there. So we'll be there 
from next week we're back to our venue the lord bless you thank you so much for coming your life will never remain the same in jesus name stretch your hands saints of god and just bless them pray for them may the lord bless you we cause the heavens to be open over you we bless you with hunger for spiritual things in the name that is above all names may you experience the hand of god in dramatic ways you will understand the intimacy of the holy spirit in the name of jesus thank you once again for coming may the lord bless you may the lord honor you hallelujah i'd like you to just follow the ushers they'll communicate a few things to you and you'll be back thank you so much koinonia celebrate them very quickly god bless you thank you dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.